you know, that you are such foolish, foolish people. But why, why, why are you finding it so hard to believe all the prophet has said? He said, don't you see that these things had to happen, that the Messiah had to suffer and then enter into his glory? Now, then Jesus started at the beginning with Moses and all the prophets. He started explaining these things to the disciples, all everything in Scripture, and, and what it said about him, all the Scripture that referred to him. And he said, uh, <clears throat> that, then they said, as it was getting late, they told him that, uh, you know, invited him to go home with them. And when he sat at they said when he sat at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. And suddenly their eyes were open. They recognized him and he disappeared. Now as we look at the lesson here, look how when <laughs> Jesus was on the <clears throat> when they were walking, most folks that Jesus just kinda come along and kinda invited him on says he and you notice that most of the time if you're going somewhere and someone come up and, and you're already there walking, they come up and say, well, good morning or whatever, say, can I join you or you mind if I join? Where are y'all? Which way y'all going? You mind if I join you? And then they would, that's the way they would get walking with you. But with Jesus, <laughs> it says Jesus just walked. He walked right along with him, and he said, I, I noticed, you know, he said, I noticed y'all was in such a great conversation. And and <clears throat> he said, uh, well, what are y'all in such a deep conversation about? And then they started telling him, all, so all this was, in, you know, and all this that we today so talking about was in God's plan, but the disciples didn't didn't know it, didn't pick it up. Uh, Jesus' question when he says, well, what are y'all so in such a deep, deep conversation about? He told them, he said, and when he asked them that, they just stopped. They were so sad, so downcast, so gloomy. They felt so bad. And, and then the, uh, the one named Clifford said, he was telling him again, said, you know, you mean you're not aware of what was happening the last few days? Where you been? So you must be the only one don't know. Jesus knew. Jesus just kept on. And see, when they ask these questions, the thing about it is they just assume that Jesus was the only one who did not know what happened since he was asking them what they were talking about. And But they, 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 they just assume he was the only one around that didn't know what happened. But the uh, the two disciples assumed that they knew much more about what happened than the strangers who had just joined them on the road. But Jesus is the only one who knows the meaning of all has happened. But they did not know that. And see, and that hope was gone. It, you know, it's tough to face our disappointment. And when we have invested trust in someone or something, and see it all crash. That places an undue burden on our heart. And this is how the disciples felt after Jesus was crucified. They had pinned their hopes on him <clears throat> and upon his deliverance of Israel from the Roman impression, oppression. They were so they were so tired of the Romans uh, oppressing them and all and they felt like, Well now this is it. When Jesus came, that was it. But now that he's been crucified, and, and and they said, you know, all their hope is gone. But to the death, they faced disappointment. They said, you know, everything is gone. Uh, we don't know uh, what, you know, and it's just that they were confused. And so he said, <clears throat> Cleopa said, besides, said, all of that happened. said, now it's the third day. And at today, I ain't seen nothing happen. But the, the women told them that they met the angels at the tomb in our earlier lesson. He said, and they said that he had risen. 
But they, they found that hard to believe. And, and Cleopas and the other disciples were, they were apparently not convinced that the rumors that were spread by the women that Jesus was alive and had been seen, they didn't think that was enough solid evidence, enough for them to believe in. And at that point, you know, it appears that the risen Lord had had enough. So he told them, he said, he began to show them. He began to take them to school through the, through the scripture, telling them. He, and he said, you know, he called them, he said, you know, you're foolish one. He said, you know, in other words, he said, you're unintelligent, you're dumb, basically. He took them back to school. He laid out the whole prophecy pattern from beginning to end, explaining each one. As if to say, you should have known this, and they should have. In other words, they should have paid more attention to Jesus' teaching. Now, by this time, they were nearing the end of their journey to make a males. And Jesus, gave, he gave them an opportunity to invite him into their home. You see, they had some unfinished business, and Jesus knew he, he, there was one or two more things he needed to square up with them. So he gave them an opportunity. They said, well, you know, the day is about shot, said he. So, you know, we've been walking. It's been a journey. You're tired. Said, and, you know, you may as well come on, go home. You're welcome to come and go home with us. He said, because uh, the day is far spent, you know, the day's gone. So he, and Jesus accepted <laughs> the opportunity. And and, and because he still had to do some unfinished business between them. So, and they wanted him to come home with them because they had enjoyed all that he had been talking to him about. Still didn't know. God had kept them from knowing who he was. And so they wanted him to come on, go home with us and talk to us. You know, and we'll, we'll sit down and, and, and talk some more. And we we'll have, we have supper and then we'll talk some more. And so Jesus said, okay. And you know, when most times when you visit a person's house, you just stand and wait for them to tell you where to sit or to sit you or whatever, and uh, wait for them to, you know, to bring the food to the table, wait for them to pass it around or whatever. But Jesus took charge. Jesus took charge. He noticed that uh, he, didn't, he, he didn't, nobody asked him to tell him where to sit. No, but he took the food. He took the bread. And, 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 you know, he took charge, in other words. And that is, that, in, in our day, it would be unusual because you come to my house, you stand there and wait for me to tell you where to sit. And then if I put the food on the table, I start the passing around from you to the next one. But Jesus didn't do that. Jesus took charge. And he took the bread. They said he blessed the bread, he broke the bread, and he gave it to him. And, and, and the disciple had seen the breaking of the bread this way before, when he was feeding the 5,000 in Luke 9 and 16, and the, and the, at the last supper, Luke 22 and 19. And as soon as they saw him break that bread that way, uh-oh, the light came on. And they recognized it was Jesus. And then Jesus just disappeared. And, and you know, when you look at this, you know, the disciples' faith and, and, and confidence was shallow. It had to be. You know, they had heard Jesus tell that tell this many times what would be happening to him. And he told it in, 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 in most of the, all the Gospels. He, he was telling them beforehand some things that would happen to him. He told them he would be crucified. He told them he would rise the third day. So, you know, and, and he had been telling them this. Even at one point, Peter says, uh, Lord, you know, Peter rebuked him. There's nothing like that's going to happen to you. God forbid for that anything like that to happen to you. So it is not like they hadn't heard this. But their faith and their confidence was shallow. And, and uh he, he said that, um, and, you know, they didn't realize it. Even when it happened, they didn't realize none of this. And they were like in another world. 
on another planet when all this happened. It shouldn't have, have been a surprise to them. And even when, even when Peter was telling him that, you know, they didn't sink in with him. They, none of this stuff sink in from hearing. And cause by in our other lesson, when they said the women were saying, when they all were saying, he's not here. And, and uh, they told him, said, well, don't you know? The angels told him, said, didn't you remember? He told you back in Galilee that he would be crucified, that but he would rise on the third day. And they said, oh, okay. Yeah, I do remember him telling us that. But yet here, you know, everything, it's like they, they drew a blank. They couldn't remember any of this. And, you know, I'm not talking about they didn't, them recognizing his face because they didn't see the wounds or nothing like that. But the thing about it, I'm talking about remember what he had told them. He had told them on several occasions that, that this is what's going to happen to the, to the Son of Man. He'll be, he'll be brought before the people. He'll be crucified, and, but he will rise on the third day. But they, they drew a blank. And when and the women told them about their experience at the tomb, they just brushed off. You know, that should have jarred something in their memory. Mm -hmm. That should have told them that, you know, oh, yeah, I remember Jesus said that's what was going to happen. He said this was going to happen. And that's what he Because, you know, with us, <laughs> we as we read the Bible, we, you know, we read especially in Revelation. And we read about things that's going to happen. He tell us about at the end, before the end of time, there would be the, the wars and rumors of wars and storms and all that stuff. And you look at it, and when we see these things now, the first thing we think about, well, you know, that is what the scripture said. We're just living in those days. Mm -hmm. Because now, you don't, you know, there is no more hurricane season. There's no more tornado season. It's any time. That's right. Mm -hmm. You may as well have a tornado in January that will tap to do some great destruction. It, it may happen in January just as much as it would happen in September. So you don't it, don't know. There's no more telling. There's no season to telling things. But I'm saying when these things come about, we know we've read the scripture and we know that that is what the Lord said would happen. He talked about how the wars and rumors of wars and how the uprising in communities, in the homes, in the churches. All of this is what he said would happen before he came back again. So when we we see these things and we hear these things, the we, first thing we notice that, well, this is what the Word says. But apparently the disciples just did just didn't pick it up. They just didn't uh, understand it. And I know God kept them from recognizing him. I'm not talking about him as a person, but I'm talking about uh, their memory of what he said was happen. He said he would be crucified. He would be uh, on a cross. And then he would be buried. But he would rise again on that third day. And they all knew this was day three. And, and his body was not in the grave. So, you know, why wouldn't you kind of think about, oh, okay, okay, that's what he said. And think, it, why was it so hard to think he was alive as it was to think that maybe someone had stolen his body? The disciple was confused. They said, you know, I don't know what to believe. The women said they went there and they said they saw angels and angels told them that he was not there and he had a, had a, had risen. He said, well, we went down and later on, no, it was just like they said, he was not there, but we didn't see him nowhere. But he didn't say where he was going when he, when he rose. He said he would rise on the third day. But the cycle was just, they were really a pitiful group because they didn't seem to understand. <clears throat> they didn't seem to understand anything about that. They, they seemed to draw a blank. Even when back in the other lesson, when they told them, said, you know, 
Jesus, uh, he's not in the grave. He told you that uh, she was going to rise. <laughs> so that third day, and they said, okay, in Galilee, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. They, he told us that. But but then it goes right back, like I said, with this lesson, they just struggling to accept the fact that he has risen. I don't know where they might have thought he was, but I'm saying they were so downhearted. They didn't believe the report that the women gave. And then Peter went, and Peter was full of sorrow because he didn't see him. He saw the grave, but he didn't see Christ. And and um, it's like their hope was gone. And it must have been very hard for them to realize, you know, they're not to have any hope. Because after all, a lot of people depended on the disciples for teaching them as well as God. God would send them out to do some teaching and to teach the people and everything. And now they were in the same shape the people were. They were so downhearted, so downcast because they saying that, you know, hey, what are we going to do now? Our hope is gone. All our hope is gone. But then they, when he went home with them, he knew there was one more thing he needed to do. And when he broke the bread and, and passed it around, it was just like it was when he fed the 5,000 and, and he said like the Last Supper, oh my God, they recognized that is God. What is God? So as soon as they recognized, he disappeared. But at least they know they had entertained Jesus, not just the stranger. They entertained Jesus. But all of these things that was happening should have jarred their memory, but it didn't. And everything that the women had told them and, and Peter went to the grave and they even went, some of them went, but nothing jarred their memory saying, this is what God said that he was going to do. But, you know, I'm so grateful that we have the Bible to read. See, we didn't have the privilege of walking and talking directly with him like the disciples. But but we have the privilege of going to his word. We can study his word. We can meditate on it. And, you know, you can study over and over. You got your Bible. You can do it over and over again because... We must, we got to be solid believers because you see what happened to the disciples. They were shallow and this thing shook them. It shook them bad. And things will come upon this world, upon this earth that's going to shake us and shake us kind of bad. So if we're not solid, if we're not anchored in Jesus, and you know what could happen to us. So that's why we have to be solid believers. We have to read, we have to pray, we have to meditate on scripture, and, and we have to spend time with the Lord. I mean, spend some quality time. We don't just read, okay, today I read the whole chapter of whatever, Matthew, or whatever, no, and check it off on your check-off list. That's not the way he wants it. He wants us to get in there and to sit with him, and, and to, to just sit there and get the word in us. And then when we go out, we've got something to fight the enemy with. Because you see how shaky they were? This thing threw them. It threw them. And things will throw us too. In the world that we're living in, there's some things we definitely are not prepared for. We are not spiritually prepared for some things that's come upon us. And when it does, it's through. And so, but if we're anchored in Jesus, <laughs> if we got our roots deep, got our roots real deep down in in the ground, and we're holding on, we're staying connected to that vine, we're holding on. Then when these things come, it's not saying it ain't going to bother us. No, no, it always will. But what we're saying, it will, it will not shake us all the pieces. It would not make us go all the pieces. It would not shake us off our foundation because we are strong. We got an anchor and we won't, we may not always, like I said, we may not always recognize some things coming to us, but we do know that we've got somebody that can help us in every situation that comes about. Doesn't make it different what it is. We got somebody. But in order to do that, we've got to have that anchor. We got the anchor 
down. We got to have the anchor in Jesus so that when the storms come, and just like when the disciples was out on the ship, when the storm come, they were so afraid and everything. But Jesus was laying right in there asleep. But they they didn't see that. They should, you know, after Jesus was there, they didn't have nothing to worry about. They had it made if he was in the ship, no matter what was going on out on the ocean. So this is what our lesson stated that we're they're struggling. The disciples were struggling to accept this resurrection, to accept all this stuff. They said there's so much going on that they, they, they just couldn't, they, they couldn't decipher all of that. And they were confused because the women said that they met the angels. The angel told them he had risen and he was alive. They went. They didn't see him. They were just confused by everything. And they were worried because it's like now, I guess we'll be stuck under the Roman oppression for the rest of our days. But if Jesus wants us, he wants, our, he wants a, a relationship with us. And we need that solid relationship. Like I said, we get to reading and meditating on the scripture. We can pray and stay connected. And so we can grow strong in the Lord. And then we'll recognize him at work in our lives. Because sometimes things that go wrong, you don't understand. Sometimes you don't want to ask someone else. You don't. Sometimes we just don't want people to know what we're going through. Uh, whether that's good or whether it's bad, but sometimes that's, some people are like that. Some of us will, will say what things are going on and some will not. Some will just keep it. So I'm just saying that you want to be strong in the Lord because you want to recognize him working in your life. And see, the disciples didn't recognize him. They didn't recognize him at all. Would we? Would we recognize him? We just, we recognize Jesus, maybe not in, if we stay with him, then we could recognize him at work in our life, even if we didn't recognize the person. We've not seen Jesus, but the disciples had, they had a privilege. I mean, they walked and talked with him and all that kind of stuff. But we, we didn't have that privilege. So we have to go on the scripture. We have to read our scripture. And that is where... I'm coming out fellowship, uh, the preaching, the teaching, and all of that comes in. And that's what we have to rely on. But God left something for us to rely on. So that's why we need to, uh, why we, we need to make sure we are strong in the Lord because <clears throat> we want to recognize the sense the disciples did. Would we also recognize him at work in our lives? That's what we have to do. And this morning, you know, God is alive and well. And praise God for the resurrection. Because Jesus is alive and well. And so are we. Are there any comments? Are there any comments? Yes, ma'am. I just want to thank God for you, and I want to thank God for giving you that awesome lesson to feed our soul with. I just want to thank God for you. And like you were saying a while ago, we go back there while you were letting them know he was gone, but what it was going to go away. But what it was, those people, I don't think it was sinking in to them what he was talking about. It didn't dawn on them. And like on that ship, when the wind got tossed in the turn, the Christ was asleep in there. But they got scared. And then that's when they woke Christ up. And then Christ asked them, where is your faith in? So we got to have faith in Christ and believe what he say and pay attention to what he say. And then that was sank in, and we would grab what he's talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. Are there any other comments? That's why when, when people are talking, that's why you need to listen. Because sometimes, if you ain't listening to some of the words that uh, they are saying, you like uh, Mother uh, B.P. said, you'll miss out on a lot of things that be going on around you or in your life. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
we if we're anchored in God, we don't have to worry. Things are not gonna be always be right for us. And sometimes we get a little bit anxious or whatever. But then we can say, My hope is anchored in Jesus. Leave it mm-hmm. alone. Lord is in your hand and so you're gonna fix it your way in your time. Mm-hmm. So are there any other comments? Yes. Uh, I have one answer. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, what I wanted to say is, like you were saying, the disciples, they were struggling to accept, you know, what Jesus had told them. If we would have taken and apply that to what where we are now, some of us are struggling to accept that we aren't gifted to be able to do things that others are. But but if we accept what God has blessed us with, and if we don't know what that gift is, pray and ask for discernment. Stop struggling. Um you know, just mm-hmm. read and, and, and seek understanding. So we uh-huh. struggle to accept that, you know, where I'm weak at teaching and you're strong, I'm struggling to accept why am I not being heard instead of, Lord, you know, what would you have me to do? What is what is it that you would have me to do? So That's right. It's current day, too. Even though they had Jesus right there with them, we got him through the word, through his spirit and we still struggling even though he's already told us so just praying for the spirit of discernment to understand and accept what he would have us to do and not try to work outside of our role yes I, I understand that because i tell the lord every week lord do i keep on am i doing it right how much more should i do tell me what more could i do you know that's it Am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Am I giving it all? You know, what else can I do to to make it uh, uh, understanding and interesting enough so that we can all get involved? With Lord, I just you know I just want to do all He wants me to do, and I don't yes. never know when I've done it all. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I thank God for bringing me to many times. Yes, ma'am. And uh, he, he's so good, I'm telling you, and merciful. He's with you all. He's with us all the time. But he give us a change of heart. Mm-hmm. That, that Holy Spirit and that Holy Ghost power that is powerful, too. I tell you, you will have peace. I don't care what's happening and going on. You might worry a while for God mm-hmm. that the world can't see it, but you can tell fear inside of your heart. Amen. That's just how it works. Yes, ma'am. He gives you that peace and joy. It's unspeakable. I wouldn't take this whole world full of money for it. And, uh, of course, I've been through a lot of storm, but like I said, he will bring us out. Amen. Like and you pray, just pray, keep on praying. Yes, for all of his goodness and mercy. That's where we come short sometimes. We Amen. And praying and thanking him, glorifying his name. Not our name. It's sure. not about me. It's all about uh, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and you, you know, um, as we all look back and see, we're believers in Christ, but we can look back and say, Lord, I, sometimes you can even say, I thank you for my storms, because mm-hmm. storms is what made me what I am today. Amen. We, we can look back at some of our time where we struggle, but we still had the faith in God that he pulled us through. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Are there any other comments? Yes. Uh, good you. morning. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Um, yeah, I, I would just like to echo everything everybody has have said. Uh, I appreciate uh, you, um, all that you do, and every round get higher and higher. Uh, but mm-hmm. I am struggling with. Um, you know, I always say we must be true to ourselves before we can be true to others. And I'm just right. having a hard time with church folk that say we got the faith, 
but they say one thing, but they do not accept things. And, and, and I'm just having a hard time with that because if, now I ain't there yet, but one thing I can say, I truly believe and I know God has been good to me. And no matter what, if I don't wake up in the morning, it's all right. But I'm having a hard time struggling with folk that say they got faith, but they don't show it. Um, you know, I, I, I love my mother. My mother died, and 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 um, I know that uh, if it had not been for her, it would be no me. And I had to accept that. I mean, you know, I I love my mother, but I, it was all right, and it's all right with me when he take me. But we have got to start showing the world that we got faith because if we are weak, and if and and the folk in the streets see we are weak, then what do they have to look forward to? I, I am sick of uh, of, of, of uh, pretty words. I say it all the time on Facebook. I can't. I'm sick of pretty words. I need to see action. And 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 the older I get, um 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 I'm, I'm struggling with things. And I got things I need to work on as a person. But when it comes to things that, like I say, things that affect me directly or indirectly, or if I'm doing things that affect others directly or indirectly, I gotta I gotta check myself. And I got to get it right. So, um, you know, we, we got to understand that if we're going to talk about I got the faith and all this. Uh, I look at when the pandemic came uh, before I got my shots and stuff. I was struggling with it. But at what point in time do we come to realize, well, I'm saying I got the faith. No matter what, if he take me, the pandemic or whatever, how can I say that I got the faith, but I'm not sure of it? So we got to live what we say. Again, like I say, I'm not there yet, but I'm struggling trying to get there. But I'm also trying to let people understand that what little religion I do have, that um, I trust and believe in him. I mean, I'm walking around right now. I mean, people dying every day. I turned 60 years old. It seems like when no birthdays come, it seems like, you know, I got to get I gotta get better and better. I got to get good and good. So, you know, I'm, 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 I ain't there yet, but I'm trying. But every day I'm trying to, to do a little more. And I'm trying to treat people right. But I can get stupid now, you know. But uh, I ask the Lord to forgive me. But I'm just saying, we have got to start living what we are saying, especially when it comes to religion. And and I'm just having a long, hard time. I, I look at some pastors, some, some deacons, some mothers, myself. And we got to do a better job of putting it out there for other folk that are in the learning process like myself. Y'all just don't know that you all, uh, uh, all of y'all have been there longer than I have, and y'all just don't know what you do for me. If it, if it wasn't, were not for you all, I wouldn't be where I am today. I've always hung around older people, and that's where I got my wisdom from. But um, I'm, I'm just enjoying my company with um, Anderson Chapel folk and, 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 and St. Stephen folk, I mean, you know, it's it, it just good stuff. And, and I look forward to it. So um, I appreciate you again. And I love all of y'all. And let's just live and be true to ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Dancy. And we can Yes. Uh, let me yes. add something. Okay. And I, I just want to say... Uh, my uh, brother Nancy, uh, and uh, I, I, I listen to you, and I, I know where you're coming from. You made one, you made one statement there that I, I pray, I pray one day that you will a man that takes just a little bit, uh, because we all can get, as you say, I can get stupid. We do things out of character, things that we should not do. So. Uh, and whatever I, I say, that's the men that say this. Uh, that's as in front of there. Unfortunately, I can get stupid. Because uh, as Christians, as Christians, our goal and our strive is to walk in the newness of life and to be like Christ. So anytime that we can get, anytime we get stupid, that's an unfortunate act. So just as we, uh, let the, just, just, I mean that statement just a little bit that I know of. Uh, you know, you may have your have your reason and thoughts, uh, but we all pray together. 
but just unfortunately, because that is unfortunate when we did like that, because we need to be walking in the news of life. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Are there any other comments? Anyone have any other comments? Thanks for the listen. Well, thank you for listening. And we all, are, like we said, we all trying to get there. And as Brother Dancer said, he's struggling. Well, we all are struggling. I Amen. struggle, I struggle Amen. every week. They're, they're hoping that this week will be better than last week. And I just keep... I just keep going on because, you know, once you're on the road, you made up your mind you're going to follow Christ, so you're going to go through some storms. But that's all right, too. That'll be all right, too, because, you know, this is the way this journey is. So what we do, if we, you know, if we're going to make uh, disciples of all nations, we got to start in our local community. Amen. So, if there are other, if there are no other comments, then this concludes our Sunday school lesson for today. Thank you, uh, Trustee Wooden, for the good lesson this morning. I know we uh, everybody done participate in saying something about the lesson, but anyone have any more uh, suggestions of what they learned today about the lesson this morning? Still going to accept. Anyone need a church? If not, we just, to me, we just got to keep our faith up and keep our hands in the Lord's hand and not to struggle so much, but we can still travel with the Lord. Amen. All right. Now we'll turn it over to our sit-in secretary this morning, Sister Johnson. Reverend Lewis. Um, I, mean, I can barely hear you. How many do we have today? I can't hear you. We have 13. In the house? Or all together? Oh, I'm sorry. We had 13 online, and we had uh, 10 in house. Okay, thank you. Thank you. April 9, 2023, Deacon Reese called to order at 10 a.m. Song, Closer Walk with Thee by Mother Barnes. Prayer, Reverend Faison. Trustee Wooten took charge at 10.03 a.m. Lesson number two, Subject Struggling to Accept. Scripture came from Luke 24, 13-27 and 30-31. Key verse, and their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Luke 24 and 31. Um, the lesson was reviewed for 45 minutes, and we had several comments. And um, in house was uh, 10. Call in with 13 for a total of 23. And your secretary for today, Minnie Johnson. Thank you, Ms. Johnson, Minnie Johnson, for the, uh, keeping up with the minutes this morning. Uh, there are any corrections? If not, we will receive the, uh, uh, we will see the, uh, report as she has stated. And we now will close out with the word, Amen. 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 Then we are turning over to Reverend Lewis. Thank you, each and every one that was on this morning, each one that participated on the lesson this morning. Thank you. Everyone have a good Easter. Thank you. Thank you, Deacon Ricks. And thank you, uh, Trustee Wooten, for such a wonderful lesson. And to each one of you that contributed to the lesson today, uh, very... Okay.
very powerful and interesting lesson today, and everyone seemed to be engaged today, and we thank God for you being engaged with the lesson today. Uh, it went uh, very, very well. Some may say it, it, it did not go over. It, it actually just went well, because when you, it's wonderful when you have a wonderful dialogue and uh, people are uh, engaged in it and we're able to share some thoughts and ideas. And we just thank you, our trustee, Wooten, for such a powerful lesson today. As we prepare uh, today, we'll say again, Happy Easter to each one of you. We're thankful that you have gone in with us. And we know that we stated that we had uh, 13 online and 10 in-house. Uh, Brother Dancy and his uh, uh, media patch had quite a few more. And we thank God for all of those that have joined in with the Sunday School. At this time, we're going to prepare for our devotional service. Uh, in-house, we have... Uh, uh, just uh, Deaconess Hamilton is going to lead us with a song, following with 